only real way to time travel is to have yourself carved in stone, and then perhaps you will exist for thousands of years. Many of the ideas presented in this film can only occur with some other tweaking while in the proximity of being underground in rock. What I want to talk about today is my theory on time travel and how, if one looks carefully enough and listens to the vast tales that are many around the world at different holy sites and places where people have initiated ancient traditions, that time travel might be possible. So I am dowsing this area, just simply asking if there's any energy here. And as you can see, my pendulum oscillates powerfully that this seems to be a powerful spot. Perhaps these were carved out above ley lines and the water that is inside these caves, very useful for keeping one alive. expand upon a personal theory of mine that doesn't deal exactly with this place in particular, although it might, but I'm going to expand upon a few other ideas that seem to draw me towards forming a conclusion about what places like this might be or could be. So I've been dowsing this place, looking for energy fields, seeing if this registers higher than the average place. From reading the book Magical and Mystical Places by John Wilcox and Elizabeth Pepper, I discovered more about Pythagoras, a philosopher and a scholar, who is believed to be the reincarnation of Apollo, and some say even the Jesus story was taken from his own remarkable life. As Pythagoras says, he believed that the world was divided in three parts, most creatures including humans who subsisted in, on material things were in the lowest, inferior portion. Above men was the superior world, and above that, topping the other two, was the supreme world. This man could aspire to only by raising his material nature, said Pythagoras, until he was acceptable to the gods. So there's different vibrational levels here on this planet and if you can raise your vibrational level or tweak it somehow to be accessible to this gravitational force, one should be able to perhaps take a trip into the future. Pythagoras was also said to know that all buildings radiated with a harmonic sound and I think even there one could travel from building to building if they were constructed in the right manner. Now these aren't exactly the kinds of caves I'm talking about. These are old carved tombs or something like that. It's just that this place has excited me so much that I've decided to give this talk here. So you want to know about time travel? Well, this is how I came about to think about it. There are two major legends in Turkey 
that pertain to time traveling. One is outside the city of Ephesus where there's a cave of the seven sleepers and in about 247 AD seven people carrying the messages of Jesus Christ actually had to hide away in order not to be persecuted and they found a cave in which they went into and they remained there for 200 plus years emerging 437 AD with all of their ideals and messages about Jesus Christ intact. There's also another cave that I haven't been to and have heard only a little about and we'll put it in the notes underneath this video. Another cave in which somebody went into and time travel occurred in that fashion as well. They went in, they came out a vast amount of time later, hence time travel. Time travel also has legends based in Scotland and Ireland where there are a lot of fairy mounds and the myths and legends talk about a variety of people going into those fairy mounds and one of the rules of thumb pertaining to that is if you go in to a fairy mound being invited by the fairies to make sure you block the door so it doesn't close on you because if that occurs then each second you spend in a fairy cave represents an hour or so or more outside here in the real world. Now there's also a legend about a famous fiddler in Scotland who was invited into a fairy mound and he was quite renowned as a fiddler and the fairies invited him in to play all that he could, which he did. He played for about two or three hours every song that he had and during that entire time the fairies danced fiercely and madly never sweating never taking a break and he thought this is indeed strange nobody can dance like this so vigorously for so long he got actually pretty freaked out and muttered a save me Mary or Jesus type phrase and in which case the fairy door opened and he left the fairy cave when he stumbled back into town everything had changed he arrived back in town something like 200 years later the people were shocked you know to see him in his ancient dressing and he disintegrated into ash soon after although people did know about the missing legend of this famous fiddler so there we have now three counts of time travel all pertaining to caves or going underground so I suspect when it comes to time travel one must be fully uh, engulfed in a body of earth a cave or a mound or something like that in order for this time travel to occur and I also think that it only goes in one direction you can only go forward you cannot go back so if you were even lucky enough to be at the right place at the right time which is pretty much trial and error on my part that if you were in the right place in the right time you know a a very short amount of time there when this phenomena occurs will yield you stepping back out into the real world you know a considerable considerable amount of time later and that might be a bit perplexing and um, adventurous so arriving at the idea of time travel well, Stephen Hawking says that once you leave the Earth's gravity and go into space, one would have to travel very fast, but once you leave the gravity of this planet, time acts in a different manner. Hence, you have time travel. So time travel might be possible with our vast computing power today and the further reaches of what we thought we understood being grasped and understood. Perhaps 
they will figure out an algorithm and time travel will be possible in one direction into the future. And that will be the day where only the bravest and most adventurous of us will be going to myself right now. I think that when these people were attempting time travel, they also initiated some kind of harmonic sound in which to trigger the time travel phenomena. Another note I would like to say how in ancient Greece, the Kuros, the man with the adventurous spirit, would find a teacher and he would learn to become an iatromantis, a sage healer. And once this had occurred, he was able to breach time and space. Now how did he do that? That was simply done by incubating in a cave, perhaps something similar to this. So there, you can see the nose, the eyes. We'll try to re-encapsulate this whole idea that so time is like a bubble. It pertains to gravity. It has different algorithms within itself. There are places where time moves very ordinarily, and other places where it moves quickly or slowly. Time is something like this. It is part of the gravitational field of everything. If you look closely, its particles take on everything. But if you look at the back side, time has these different points where if you go into a cave and one of those deep algorithms of gravity form, you can perhaps spend thousands of years in there. And for you, it is only an hour or so. And so that is time and that is gravity. And I hope my ideas here have shed some light on that. Now caves are not the only place where sacred knowledge was gleaned from. Not only did the Greeks glean sacred knowledge transmitted from the stone while incubating inside a cave. But the Hindus as well went into Samadhi meditation and it was vast amounts of time meditating in caves where a transmission of knowledge comes from the rock itself and into the person. And we have even Christian stories like this where St. John the Apocalypse had written his tale of the Apocalypse in a cave on the island of Patmos. And when you take all this into account, our world is still full of mysteries that perhaps if the ancient library of Alexandria was not burnt down, and people like St. Paul in the magical city of Ephesus did not burn all the ancient books of knowledge. We would be much further along today with our understanding of some of the greater secrets on this planet Earth.